Hi DIYers, this is Frank at Alarm Grid. Today we're in the Alarm Grid lab again with the L5200 Lynx Touch Honeywell self-contained wireless alarm system. Uh, we'll be working with Z-Wave again. Uh, we just shot a video on setting up a scene on the panel, um, which is basically telling the system uh, to do certain actions with the Z-Wave device. Now we're going to create a rule, and the rule is basically going to show us uh, how to set up automated trigger points. Okay, so. Uh, there's a few different ways to do it, and I'll walk you right through each of them. Um, so first and foremost, with any Lynx panel, um, any supported Lynx panel that, that supports Z-Wave, uh, the L5210 uh, will require the L5100-Z-Wave module. Okay, This is a Z-Wave car that is not included with the system. Um, it, un unlike the soon-to-be-released Lyric system, uh, this panel uh, does not have Z-Way built into it. It requires that module. We offer it on our website, alarmgrid.com, if you need it. Um, once you have it installed, um, and if you need assistance with the installation, we do have another video on the install of the card. Uh, once it's installed, you'll be able to include devices, and then we can get into some rules and scenes like we're going to do now. Um, so, assuming you have that card installed, uh, you've already included your first device, which in our case, we're using the PD300Z-2. Uh, lamp dimmer. It's just a linear device, uh, simple unit to do testing with. I highly recommend getting uh, one of these as your first Z-Wave device um, so that you can kind of play around with including and excluding devices and get used to how Z-Wave works uh, because it is it is can be a little bit tricky on the technology side. Um, so what we're going to do is, is create a rule. So we'll hit the home screen or the home button beneath, beneath the home screen. Uh, automation, down key, and rules. Okay. Now we've already set up a scene in our previous video uh, to turn lights off. So all we did is we, we chose this lamp dimmer, we selected in the scene, and we said uh, we called the scene lights off. So we'll go into a rule here. We'll go to rule number one, and then click edit. Now we're in the rule. Okay. So the name of this rule I can also call lights off. Oh. Okay, so we have lights off there. We're going to save that. Uh, we, then we now have a type. Okay, the type, there's a trigger output. So you can create a rule um, to, exit, to uh, send a signal to the trigger output. There's a wired trigger output on the back of the Lynx panel that can be connected to something like the uh, Altronics uh, Ultra Sensitive Relay uh, that we have with our Lynx WEXT kit. Uh, let's say you have a wired siren you're trying to install. You can create a rule, you know, based on an alarm uh, to trigger that output, and that would basically uh, manually execute um, a signal down that wired line out of the trigger output, uh, based on whatever, you know, wh whichever uh, system operation you choose, um, and that would execute, the, that would uh, enable the siren and have the siren go off. So, if you want to do that, you can. Today's purposes, we're going to set it up with a scene. Uh, so, we're going to use our type as scene. Our action will be run scene, okay? And then uh, up on the top right, after you choose the scene as the, as the type, you'll see it says scene here on the top right. Okay, we'll click into there. Normally you see a collection of your scenes that you've already created, right? And it's important that you do that first. Um, I've already created a lights off scene in our earlier video, so we'll click lights off. And now we have a, a, a rule named lights off to execute and run a scene also called lights off, okay? Now, there's three different categories of things here, okay? Um, you can trigger uh, these, this rule based on a zone fault. In other words, a motion detecting motion, a door sensor opening, um, you know, a glass break detecting glass breakage, whatever it may be. Um, most common would be a contact maybe on a safe or um, on a door that you want to you know, execute lights on. So. Um, for the lights off scene, uh, the most common thing to do here would probably be a, 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 an arm, arm away so that when you're leaving the house it can turn your lights off. But we'll just go through the different, uh, the different options here so you'll see zone type fault. The zone type fault means that you can choose a, a zone type, so any sensor that is programmed to this type of zone. So for example, your front door, most commonly if it's an entry point, uh, is on entry exit 1. So if, if you select entry exit 1 here as a zone type fault, what that means is any of your entry doors, if they're opened or if they're faulted, um, then it will trigger this scene. Okay? 
It allows you to set up several scenes at once. There's several you know, of the same types of, of uh, existing sensors, OK? Um, these sensors are already programmed in the system at this point and would, would, manual, or would automatically um, trigger this scene, OK? But right now, we're going to actually hit that as not used. Um, the system operation, you can set this as different things that you would do. So this is probably what we will set, OK? Disarm, we would set here. That means that when you disarm the system, uh, it would turn off your lights. Now, I don't know if you'd want that, but depending on what your scene is, say you have a lights on scene, uh, you may want to do that system operation there, OK? Uh, you have arm stay, arm away. Maybe when you're staying at home at night and you arm the system, you have a few lights downstairs that you, know, you want to turn off. You could select those specific lights, set that scene here, and choose arm stay as your trigger point. Um, what I'm going to do here today is arm away, um, but just so you can kind of run through the different things here, I mean, you can set off um, you can set off these rules with a fire alarm if you have a smoke detector, something like the Honeywell 5808W3, or the Encore FF345 firefighter unit. Um, you could do a bell timeout. So, let's say you have an alarm after the four-minute default bell timeout, um, that could trigger a scene to do something else. Um, end of exit delay period, so when you leave the home and arm, arm the system, after you leave, you can, you can trigger a scene that way too. So actually when it comes to that, it may actually work better to trigger this lights off scene at end of exit delay, so that way when you're on your way out, the lights are still on, you can see what you're doing, but then when you leave and the exit delay is expired, that's when the lights off scene would, would then execute. So that's probably what we'll end up doing. Let me hit the down key just so you can see the other selections here. Uh, we have the start of entry delay. Um, so that would mean that on the way in, say your system is armed, you're out of the home. On the way back in, you have uh, your entry delay period default of 30 seconds to get in and disarm. This scene could be set up uh, probably for like a lights on uh, you know, scene, something like that, where uh, the, the start of entry delay trigger would be a great thing to uh, turn on your lights. So that on your way in, as you're trying to you know, locate the keypad, and, uh, and disarm the system, you can then um, uh, you can see what you're doing and the lights are on. Um, you can set all different types of things here, uh, duress alarm, system low battery, reporter failures, bypass, a kiss off is, is when, um, you know, you, you, when the system is dialing out to a central station for an alarm. Um, so for today's purposes, we're actually going to go back up here. We're going to do end of exit delay so that when you're out of the home, the system is fully armed away that the lights then go off. It's just a convenient thing, so you don't have to go around flipping all the switches. Um, so that will be the system operation. System operation two is uh, if you wanted to set up something else um, to also trigger it, you can set up multiple trigger points here. Uh, you can set up you know, zone type faults, system operations, and also our third section here. If you hit the down key, we'll go down to page two, and it says zone number operation. Okay, So what we do here, you can toggle that to a fault. What this does, it allows you to choose a specific zone or up to three zones, really, because there's, there's first, second, and third, um, and use that as a, as a trigger, OK? So when that zone senses, um, when that motion senses motion, when that door uh, is opened, it will trigger this scene, OK? Um, so when you set up, a, you could do a fault. You can also do a trouble. So let's say um, you, know, you pop a tamper cover on one of your sensors and you want you know, some lights to flash or whatever it may be. Um, that's that's an issue. That's a good example of when there's a, a trouble if you want something to, to occur, uh, or an alarm. If you just want to straight up an alarm, anytime you have an alarm, um, you know, on on a specific zone, you can set Z-Wave devices to behave a certain way based on whatever scene you choose. Uh, so for today, we'll just set it up as a fault, um, and we can choose a zone. I mean, I only have a few zones enrolled here, but we can set the front door so that. If the zone is faulted at the front door, it would turn off the lights. Okay, um, I don't think that we would really want that in real life, but we're just going to set that just so we can see what's going on here. Um, so that's pretty much how you set up a rule. Um, you know, there, there's a few different ways to do it. Obviously, uh, we have the, the zone type fault, which would be you know a perimeter type zone, so something like a window that is on, that is on an instant um, setting. Uh, any of your entry exit doors, you can set an entry exit one as the system as a zone type uh, fault here. Uh, so th there's, there's a lot of different ways to create a scene, um, a, a, or sorry, to create a rule. And after you're done selecting the specific triggers that you want, you would save. 
and then uh, we can get into showing you how to, how to manually execute rules and scenes here in just a moment. Uh, but for now, if you have any other questions on setting up or configuring your, your first rule, uh, or, or many rules, uh, you can reach us at support.alarmgrid.com, and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel.